So we talked a lot about the different manufacturing types that you can apply within generative design today, right? We talked about additive, we talked about casting, and we talked about CNC. So one that's growing in popularity very much are two and two and a half axis CNC constraints for generative design. Now, the reason for that is because these are the cheapest to manufacture, the easiest to machine components coming out of generative design. So they're very practical for those that are in the traditional manufacturing space. Now, when setting up a two or a two and a half axis CNC project, there are a few things from the geometry setup point of view that you do have to keep in mind. So unlike additive and unlike unrestricted, we do have to keep in mind how our manufacturing orientation will actually affect the geometry that we've created to use as setup. So if you see the image in the left, here we've set up our geometry with our preserves, and we have a cylinder that's actually normal to the cutting direction of our tool. So if you see this view cube, we're setting up this part to be machined in the plus and minus C orientation. Now you can imagine that we'll want to create a flat face and then the contour profile around that part around it. However, you can see with this generative outcome, it has a very hard time dealing with that essentially transverse cylinder or, tr or transverse round around that cylinder. So what we can do to fix that, if you look at image number two to the right, here within that cylinder, we've now replaced that with a box. Now that box has a flat face against the orientation, which is in this case Z, that we are milling against. And you can see how the outcome has now kept that in perfectly. So to show a little bit about why two and a half axis is so important, so we also have things like three and five axis subtractive constraints through generative design. But two and a half allows us to make parts that are very easy to machine, creating them in pockets instead of the entire profile. So as you can see, while this three axis geometry has some curves, it has some uh, complex geometry that we would have to come in later and machine. The two and a half instead creates pockets that are much quicker to machine. And in this case, this one's already completed while the three axis would, would continue going. So this is why that two and a half axis is so important and why there's some additional geometry setup factors that we'll actually need to consider here. So the final piece when setting up a two and a half axis generative solve, again, because these are really the things that are growing the most momentum within generative design, is we also need to understand how the layers will work within each one of the generative outputs. So when you're setting up a generative solve for 2.5 axis, what it does is it will provide you three specific outcomes, splitting the part into layers and changing the orientation of how the part is machined. So you can see in outcome one, it's splitting that geometry into three layers to be machined as one setup. Outcome two is three layers, but it's machining from the opposite direction. And then outcome three is from the two setups with five layers. So these are all things to keep in mind when you're setting up a generative solve for these factors, or if you're reviewing the outcomes that you would see.